Okay, so from here, um, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about selection because the selection tool has become really, really important in how we uh, can arrange the space. So um, if you click on the selection tool again, you can also uh, select from the menu up above. So if you cl click this down, you have all of these different ways of selecting uh, points, edges, or polygons. Okay. So um, one, one really powerful one is the loop selector, and this is a cool one. If you click on that one, what you can do is you can grab a section of it. And notice that it's, it's, going, it's sort of looping around a group of points. Okay? So if we select, let's say, one of these middle ones, it'll select all the way around the model. Notice that it's selected those points and also the ones on the back side as well. And in that case, you know, we can, we can um, manipulate those forms. And again, we can scale this down. Maybe we just pull it in a little bit to sort of make that perimeter more dramatic. Okay, and so um, and so the loop selection tool becomes a really powerful thing as you as you as you're you know selecting different areas to change and manipulate the form. Um, you can also uh, select um, you know the areas uh, with the ring selection tool, and this is kind of instead of just that single line, it kind of selects an entire you know ring of those areas. So you know if we go to the middle, we could grab that whole belt, for example, in the middle of this thing. You know, and maybe do a similar, a similar sort of thing, sort of stretch this down into space or stretch it out into space to sort of change that thing. So the loop and the ring selection tools are really, really helpful when you're starting to, uh, to map these things out. Um, we can select also in, in other modes. So, for example, if I wanted to um, select like all of the bottom points, there's just tons of ways of, of doing these selections. But uh, if we go back to this live selection tool, and let's just go to multiple viewports here so we can see the object. Oh, my timer's done. That's all right. I'm starting a new one. Uh, <clears throat> that way we can see the object in multiple different views. Um, let's just go to the top view. Uh, let's just because I want to select just one of the sides. So with the selection tool selected, you notice down in the um, attributes manager, there are um, uh, different types. Uh, there's ways of... of um, uh, manipulating the selection. So, for example, right now, if we the first one for options, if we if we not, look at that, it says uh, only select visible elements, and that means you're selecting any, you know you're you're only selecting the points that you can see directly in front of you. If we click that off, it allows you to select the points in front of you and behind you. So if I if I drag across these two points, and then if I go back to my uh, object here, we can see that it's selected, you know, from the top view, it's selected these two points, but also the two points directly behind it, okay? And so when you're working with a, with a model and you want to, let's say you just want to select, you know, the middle of the object, but you also want to select the back of it, you know, that becomes a really powerful tool. But you just have to be careful to sort of click in between them, right? So select only visible elements on or off, right? So if it's on, then it's only going to select the ones that are in front of you. If it's off, you can select more than one. Uh, the, the polygons behind it. So again, here, you know, I can I can manipulate this. I can move it up and down and sort of change its space and, and form. Okay, so that's uh, you know that's working with points. Um, we can also work with single edges in a similar sort of way. So if you grab the edges tool, you know, you can select any of these edges. Like for example, if I wanted to, uh, if you click the shift key and hold this down, you can select multiple edges. Maybe just the middle of this thing. And then, uh, again, you can pull it and shape it and manipulate it further to make a more complex form. Um, uh, typically, I tend to use mostly the points tool and the polygons tool for when I'm uh, manipulating a form. The polygon tool is really helpful. Uh, again, you can select uh, single polygons, or you can hit shift and select, mul select multiple polygons. Um, uh, and uh, again, this you, know, you have the option of selecting visible elements or non-visible elements. So, uh, you know, in this case, like if I wanted to select just the top, again, I could select all of these elements here, and, the, and then I can manipulate them. Uh, the other thing you can do with polygons is you can rotate them, which is kind of fun. So if you take the rotate tool, you can also, you know, spin it around a little bit, right? So now we can really kind of stretch and manipulate this form and, uh, and, and continue to... Um, to uh, shape it in that way, so you can you can you know twist it one way, you can twist it the other way, and now you're getting a much more complex form, uh, you know, using those polygon tools, points tools, and uh, and single manipulation tools to really uh, 
create a highly elaborate object. Okay, so I also want to talk about the uh, using an extrude tool, which is really helpful. So I popped in an object. We have we segmented it into three sides, uh, and we're going to make it editable. And uh, what I want to do here is uh, I'm just going to grab the polygon tool, and I'm going to select uh, to begin with just the middle one here. Okay, so uh, if I want to start to to use this. Uh, to start to shape this even further and stretch this out further, what I can do is extrude areas out, which is literally pulling it out and creating a whole new set of polygons when I do that. Okay, So the extrude tool is found uh, under Mesh and Create Tools. And if you look down here, we have Extrude. Okay, You can also do find that by just hitting the D key. And uh, at any time, you know, when you, when you scroll over these areas, it will show you um, what what is uh, located there? So if I if I extrude, what I can do is again not grabbing the arrows, but grabbing outside of the box. Just click, hold it down, and pull it up. Okay, and you can see that it's like creating a whole new form out of that object. Right? It's pulling up. It's creating a, uh, all new polygons, and now we have a much more you know we have a complicated form in that way. If you were to just pull up the middle of the cube using the move tool by selecting a polygon. Let's just do that quick so you can see. If I grab this one right here uh, and I move this one, right, instead of extruding it, it's going to stretch all those guys out, right? It's going to pull all of those areas out with it. The extrude tool is going to grab that polygon and it's going to put new faces around it and then, and then pull it out so that you can have a whole new object to work with, okay? And so that becomes, you know, really helpful. It gives you more polygons to work with and then it also allows you to have a much more complicated form. Um, you know, again, from here, you can start to, you know, man manipulate further and, ma you know, make this more complex. Um, the extrude tool is really great in that way. Uh, there's also another tool similar to that called extrude uh, inner, which is found, all, you know, right below that one. So extrude and then extrude inner, which allows you to sort of create another form within that form. Okay, so you can extrude inner and then you can also, uh, also, by the way, this is a little history of your tools. So if you want to go back to find it quickly, you can just grab it here. And then you could extrude up again. Okay, So the extrude tool helps you to create, again, it creates more polygons in the form. It Instead of stretching the, the polygon surface, it makes new faces that align it so you can continue to ma manipulate it further.